see us on Facebook yet? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There I is. What's going on, guys? It is Throw It Out There Thursday. And do we have a special product kind of overview that we're going to talk to you guys about? And also, we're going to talk about a little bit of a survey that we'd like you guys to do. Um, but we'll go into detail with that a little bit further in the show. But in order to talk about everything that we have going on today for this Throw It Out There Thursday, we have to go over to Justin Smith. Thank you, Steve. That was pretty awesome. Yes. I really appreciate that introdu introduction. Um, throw it out there Thursday. We want your input. This, this whole episode is about you guys chiming in and giving us your ideas, as well as a survey that we want you to fill out so we can get more information on a new product. As we're standing in the showroom with patents on products and some of the products that we make, we're going to launch a new one right now. So let's walk out in the shop because we've got some pieces of this thing, um, prototype stuff, testing stuff, and we'll let you know what it is and get your opinion. Oh, thank you, Steve. Button didn't work. <coughs> let me get that for you the old-fashioned way. Thank you very much. Let me do it the old-fashioned way. <laughs> didn't work out very well. No. <coughs> so, um, in the shop today we've got, hmm. gosh, Steve, what do we have? A whole different list of UTVs. Man, we've got I mean, we've got KRXs, we've got XP1000s, we've got the Commander XTP four-seater, we've got uh, some Cowies. We've got kind of a whole plethora of stuff and we even got your Pro R, Justin. Piles of stuff, right? Piles. All different. Um, plethora. All with different weights, all uh, two-seat, four-seat, everything. Well, one of the things that we get the majority of complaints about when it comes to your factory UTV ride quality is when you take something like a four-seater and you stack a whole bunch of fat guys in the back, no offense, Steve, but when you put fat guys in the back of your four-seater <laughs> and the thing... Uh, <clears throat> I resemble that. That's right. Um, and uh, you lose some ride height in the back, right? When you lose some ride height in the back, that thing squats down. Now you're going to be a couple things. One, bottom it out a whole lot easier. Two, probably rides even stiffer than it did when it was up because if it's a bypass system, then the shock is higher up in the tube section and it's closer to the bump stage. You can tag that all day long and it actually hurts when it sits lower. Um, and a whole bunch of other issues. So one thing, Mitch, that we really would like to do and always wanted to do in some of our changes and designs on UTV systems is to be able to adjust the ride height with a push of a button. Well, it actually exists. E preload is an electronic preload adjustment system. It allows you to adjust the ride height at a push of a button, possibly. This is partially why we want your input. And to be able to adjust that according to how much weight you've got in the back. Um, as the preload goes up, the ride height also goes up. Stiffness in the system also goes up because typically when you throw a lot of weight in the back of your UTV, you're gonna need a little bit of stiffer compression as well. And all of that is all, it's all figured and part of the system with E preload. <laughs> How does it work? Well, if Brandon doesn't run me over. <laughs> he just broke his ankle on that. <laughs> <clears throat> then E preload is actually a fairly simple system. This is uh, an adjustable upper collar. This is a preload collar of sorts. This is a hydraulic cylinder. This is a little bit dirty and beat up because this is a prototype that we've been testing quite a bit. There's an outside cylinder, inside cylinder, kind of like a brake caliper. And as pressure is run up and down on the outside, these cylinders expand up to two inches. This will be between the upper preload collar and the coil spring. So imagine if on your UTV, if you went to the rear of it and you took the preload nut and you ran it down two inches really quick, well, that's about four inches of ride height, like instantly, right? Well, you put a couple fat guys in the back and you can accommodate for that and get the ride height back and the ride quality back. One way this system works, we've got multiple ways that this works and why we want your input is this is an electronic motor hydraulic system. So you can press a button on the dash now, electrically, this motor will pressurize the system and extend it, which raises and lowers the car. Simply put, press a button, raise it up. Press a button, lower it down. You can actually watch it happen 
in some of these forms of how we've designed it, right? We have a couple others. The other systems would be less expensive, but more manual, where instead of pressing a button and have it electronically raise up in front of you, you could actually press a button and as you drive it, every bump you hit, it'll raise up to the set point that you've set or decided to do. So you could raise it up to one inch, you could raise it up to two inches, or which would be two to four inches of ride height. What we want to know, and if you go to our website, please do, you can do it on your phone, you can do it on your laptop or desktop, fill out our, our uh, questionnaire. The questionnaire is going to ask you a few things. Who are you? What are you doing? What UTV you got? What kind of riding you do? And if you would like a adjustable ride height in the rear, in the front, or both, it's going to ask you about what you think you'd spend on it. And that's what we're really, really looking for because it's going to determine the direction that we're going to go. If we start doing full tilt electronically adjustable systems, it might end up being 1500 bucks or more. If you start doing manual systems where you can press the button and it'll do it as you drive the car instead of instantly while you press the button, then they're going to be a lot less. So give us real input, give us honest input. Um, don't just go in there and go, yeah, I'll buy it if it's 10 bucks. Um, give us uh, some honesty on that one. Mitch, what do you got? <coughs> uh, we have some input, let's hear it. Cody wants to know, doesn't adding a shitload of preload just give the spring a harsher feel and coil bind? Um, so coil bind is possible, but with this system it's going to be combined with the proper spring kits, it will not have any binding. Um, by raising preload or adding more spring rate, to the system, if you didn't add weight to the vehicle, then it would be harsher. But if you add weight and accommodate with preload, it will not be harsher. That's actually what you're looking to do. That's why we change spring rates when you have a heavier car. Steve. This is a throw it out there question, Justin, because mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Okay. But it says, I have uh, Jamie Ronk Mills says, I have 30 inch tires on my Can-Am base. What issues will I run into if I use my stock 28 inch tire as a spare when I am riding? Um, the only thing that's going to happen, is, since the rear of the vehicle is a spool, which means the left and right side spin the same amount, with a shorter tire, it's going to want to pull. Um, it's going to stress the axle a little bit, but not a big deal, especially if it's in the dirt. If you put it in the front, it can overheat a front diff by having one side spin more than the other, especially if it's locked in four-wheel drive. So if you can, I would put any size tire you want on there for a spare. Just don't have it locked in four-wheel drive and try and keep it to a minimum or in the dirt and you'll have very little stress on the UTV. So not a big deal. Mitch. Uh, Hollywood wants to know, how will that affect the limit straps? Talking preload collar. It will affect the limit straps absolutely zero. Bam. Um, in the design of the system, we've got enough room for our particular kit to fit still. So there's no clearance problems and the shock is still the same length overall extended, and that's the only thing the strap cares about. We want to stop it before extension. It doesn't matter what we have for preload. Mitch. Seppi be free. Seppi be free. Seppi be free. Hey, Seppi. Said, how has testing gone so far? Are you guys happy slash impressed with the technology? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, you, you guys can talk about it. We've all been in it. We've all driven it. Um, lots of testing, <coughs> and it's really impressive because if you, if you take off in a four-seater with two guys and the thing's amazing, and you throw two dudes in the back, you're gonna have to slow it down. You have to drive slower. Otherwise, if you're gonna send it through big stuff, it's gonna bottom out no matter what, right? You have to turn the compression up. You have to raise the ride height. Well, this system does both at a press of a button. So, if you're a family guy and you've got a four-seater, 75% of UTVs that are sold today are four-seaters versus two. That means that either you that bought your UTV had to confirm it with the wife to get the approval, which we know is the case. Happy wife, happy life. That's right. And she's like, Remember that only voice. if the kids can ride in the back, right? Oh, yeah. Then you've got a four-seater. And that means you're either putting a bunch of buddies in it, you're putting kids in the back. Um, you could use the adjustment. You're putting storage in the back. If it's racing and you're, you're pre-running, then you're putting a ton of fuel and tires and all kinds of stuff in the back that might get burned off. You know, or you know, maybe it's a cooler full of beer, a lot of beer, 
67 if we're, go, if we're going out, it's a lot of I've beer. I've seen it. So when you leave camp, you're going to need some ride height. And when you're done drinking, then you may not want all that ride height. I mean, not to promote drinking and driving. Absolutely Because clearly, the only people that are drinking these things in the back of the cooler are not driving UTVs. 100%. Right. Agreed. But it's a huge, huge change from what we've seen. Mitch, what do you think of it? You've been in it a lot. I like, it. I like the fact that, I mean, for us, you get a lot of people that ride with two people and ride with four people 50% of the time. So if you have the It's ability, hard for us to tune. It is, it is. So if you have the ability to add preload when you're adding, you know, two kids or two adults to the back seat by pressing a button and being able to keep the ride height where it needs to be while maintaining the right ride quality is, is super cool. So testing that side of it, being in the car for that and noticing that, you can physically sit in the back seat and feel the rear of the car lift up. So. It's, it's, it's pretty badass and it's, it, it works well and I think it's going to be something that's really cool for a lot of people who do exactly what I just said. Steve. I agree. I think it's pretty bitching that you don't have to get out of the car to adjust it. Kind of like IQS. Like I, I don't want to have to get out to adjust my shocks. I can just flip a switch and it does it. So mm -hmm. me adding more people to the back of my car, super easy just to hit a switch and it pops it up. And then when they get out, I just put it back down and it goes. So it's, it's really, really quick mm -hmm. and everything. I feel like the future is going to be more electronic on that mm -hmm. side. So going with it and getting ahead of that jump, I think is going to be pretty cool. So one thing that you said is actually really important when it comes to this survey. You guys fill this thing out because it's going to affect a lot of the directions that we're, we're going to want to go. What if this system was electric? You press a button, you stand back and watch the car rise up right there in camp. What if the system, you press a button and you have to drive it for it to pump up, which happens within the, the first 10 bumps. One's more expensive than the other, what are you willing to pay? So for, I'm just gonna throw numbers out. Would you be willing to pay 1500 bucks a kit if it was electric and did it in front of you? Or would you be willing to pay $900 a kit if it just did it on the way out of camp? I've got my opinions, but we want yours. You know, what do you think this stuff is worth? Because that's going to determine, you know, whether we do a, a mechanic, more mechanical system or more electronic system. Steve. Let's also throw it out there too, guys. <clears throat> it's, uh, we're not asking you to do this for free. We're going to pick 50 people and we're going to give uh, 50, 50 of you guys all free t-shirts and one of you guys will get a free spring kit, no matter what the car is. So, so whoa, 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 let's back that up. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Should've, Hold on, I should have been, been more hyped there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you might want to round that up. Sorry, yeah, go ahead, round it up. So if you guys fill out the form and you take, at the, at the end of the form it asks, is it okay if you fill out your information for the t-shirt? You can opt out so you don't have to put your information in there. But in order to get a free shirt or, or be in the drawing for a free spring kit, you have to do that section. We're not going to spam you. We don't use this stuff for that kind of stuff. We just need the information to be able to send you all the free stuff, okay? So say yes, fill it out. We're gonna pick 50 people out of everyone that has actually filled out the form and give you shirts. We're gonna pick one person out and give you a free spring kit. And if you put some cool yeah. notes in there, it might sway our opinion. That's, that's what I said, Justin. No, it's not. 50 actually, people are getting shirts and on one person is getting a spring Hold kit. Hold on a second, let me just do this one second. Steve. Yes. Tell us all about this thing that you're actually doing. What is going on, sir? I'm saying 50 of you are going to get picked for a shirt and one of you is going to get a spring kit. I'm pretty sure that's, <laughs> I just, I just summed it up. I you was are actually correct. looking for way more personality, Steve. Oh, sorry, sorry. Let me try it hold again. Let me second. try it again. Hey, so Steve over here, like mellow, like lame ass, totally boring Steve, lame is about to tell you ass. what's going to happen with this new survey. Steve, tell us about this survey. Guys, first. do you know what's gonna happen? Do you like this t-shirt? It's pretty bitchin', right? You could get it for free. All you gotta do is go to our website, www.shocktherapyusa.com, fill out the survey, give us your information, and one of you lucky participants is gonna win a dual rate spring kit. What is a dual rate spring kit? Watch one of our other videos and we'll talk about it. Hell yeah. There we go. We're all we filling go. that form what, what, out right what there. What is that? Right. What is that? <laughs> much, much better, Steve. Thank you. Yes. Of it course, took of three course. takes, dude. That was horrible. I know. Easy. It's been a it's been a week. You're one one take tube sock, typically. It's been a week. So, um, you guys, hey, uh, sign in. Tell us what you think right now. Mitch, you got anybody any comments? Uh, it's about 50 50 right now. One guy said I spent 58K for the Pro R. 600 bucks extra doesn't matter. <laughs> You're in you know, fact, right? Yeah. I mean, 600 bucks, no big deal when you already 50,000 it, right? Okay, I get it. But not everybody's $50,000 in their UTV. There's a whole bunch of guys that are 25 grand into an X3 max, but they need to carry the weight. We're glamorous all the time. We see guys coming by at 10 inches off the ground like that.
Little okay. shaft, right? <laughs> yes. Little very shaft. Little shaft very little shaft. Yes, it, it, it's, uh, it impresses Steve, makes him feel really good. Always. So, but it's common, it happens all the time, we see it all day. It is necessary, it's something that really works. Um, we want your opinion on price. <laughs> Automatic on a button, is it worth more money? Is it not? You just want it to work? A whole different level. Mitch. Where can the survey be found and how much time do they have? What are you asking me, Mitch? Tell them. I'll tell them, Mitch. <laughs> hey guys, if you're looking to take our survey, you go to our website, www.shocktherapyusa.com. You have two weeks to do this survey. It is at the top of our site, it's on the banner. Uh, you'll see a couple of them, you swipe through it. It's the first one that pops up when you go on. You have two weeks to do the survey and in two weeks on our next live feed, we will, uh, we'll talk about it. That's right. And the reason we say two weeks, because we're going to draw a winner on the next Throw It Out There Thursday, Mitch. Uh, Bog Dogs, I'm not avoiding your color question on the spring kit things. We do not powder coat springs any other color than silver. I think we've been over this. Uh, I don't know, a thousand times. Thousands of times in yeah. other videos. Tell mm -hmm. them 1001. Yeah, 1001. If you would like to get them a different color, we offer one person that powder coats them for us. You can order them from us and get them powder coated at that specific place. Now, let me explain a little bit more about that for the thousandth and one-th time. The reason we don't do that, two reasons. One, we'd have 10,000 times the warehouse of springs that nobody ever buys with a ton of colors. And usually that color, specific orange, is never the right orange for a guy or the right blue for a guy. Yep. Two, if you powder coat the spring, we do not know that it's ours. We do not have a part number on it. A receipt for the springs does not matter, and we don't understand or know the quality of how it was stripped at the powder coating shop you're using, and they can overheat the spring and ruin it. So we have to stay out of it in order to warranty and back up everything. But you can do it. We do it all, all day long. Just use somebody that's really good. Steve. Um, more comments than anything, but uh, everyone's saying it seems like it would be a good idea for East Coast riding through the deep water crossings and mud. Mm -hmm. And then no uh, Terry Nash said, $1,500 is not a rude price, just saying. I have seen, or I'd have to see the real time difference, but $1,500 would not scare me away. His name's Terry? Terry Nash. Okay, Terry Nash. Let me ask you something specific. If $1,500, press a button and it raises up in say 15 seconds in front of you, is one option. Or $999 is press a button and it raises up when you drive it in the first 100 yards, which one would you do? 1500 electric right now, 900 and change for one that did it in the first 100 yards. Both get there. Which one would you do? Steve. Uh, George Kane wants to know, what are your shop jacks? They are Pro Eagles. Yes. I don't know the model. I don't know the model. I know they have different sizes. They have but we, two, we have the they've got one. like a 3000 and a 5000 pound rating. We buy the 5000. Uh, living in Rocky Mountains, this is from Brandon Bennett. Living in Rocky Mountain area, are high clearance radius rods better than regular rods on an X3? Pros and cons of each. Thank you. Well, if you're rock, in my experience, trail riding does not typically have big enough rocks to be an issue. Desert certainly does not. Um, if you're rock crawling like King of the Hammers, uh, low gear range, literally dragging the skid plate over things, then high clearance radius rods are definitely a benefit in those environments. Prior to that, not so much. In the desert, we blow through a lot of boulder fields and stuff, but it's always fast and they're not that big. Sometimes we'll tag a radius rod, but it doesn't usually hurt it. Mitch. Cody said, can we substitute winning a shirt for getting an autographed used pair of tube socks from Steve? Uh, Steve, the answer is? Sure, yeah, <laughs> why not? Of course, whatever. I'm for the people, yeah, whatever works. Mm-hmm, get some. Um, Justin, when um, I'm not, th th nobody asked this. I'm just, this is me asking. When are we going to have high clearance radius rods? Um, good segue, Steve. We are actually, <laughs> we are actually in the middle of working on that. Um, and to be perfectly honest, in order to make them fast enough with the best quality, we actually bought a CNC machine specific for that, with uh, table width and table changing capacity, where we can run uh, a lot of radius rods at a time. So we're in the middle of design and prototype right now. Mitch, you had something good. Um, there's like 17 people that want to know if that's Ken Block's car in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we come over here and take a look? 
I can tell um, you his name is Tony. I won't say the rest, but it is not Ken Block. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, just leave, we'll leave that open. We'll leave it open, yeah. yeah. But, but it could be Ken Block going under the name of Tony. I don't That's know. Right. So fan vehicle or Ken Block's actual X3 behind you, Justin? Um, yeah, I'm just going gonna, gonna to leave that to the person that owns it to tell you. Um, we're not even going to go there. Sorry. Mouth. Zip it we're close. Very, we're very discreet. We have quite a few celebrities in here we don't I'll, talk about. I'll just keep rolling with it. I'll it. throw it out there because yeah. there's a bunch of them. Go ahead. Uh, what grease do we need to run on CV axles to help with temps? So we run a combination of Swepco and... Uh, it's escaping me. Memory is gone. Sorry. Uh, I forget. I'll, I'll remember in a minute. Um, a lot of people on here are saying they would pay the extra money to get the lift instantaneously. Really? I'm getting, I, I'm getting a lot of it. People are saying 1500 bucks sounds about in a good price range. Wow. But that surprises me. I thought that we really were going to have to be... I, I thought, thought it was going to be low, but th yeah. they're going to have to go to the website and fill out the survey so we can see. You really do. You really do. And I will tell you this, an electronic system cannot be done and sold for under a thousand bucks. This is why we want to ask you because we can do other things for less. Just want to make sure it's important to you. Sean Fast already says the survey is done. Bam. Atta boy. Sean Fast. What size go. shirt, man? That was fast. <laughs> uh, JLH said, if I come from Michigan, can I get a tour of the machine shop? Absolutely. You can come from across the street. <laughs> <laughs> Just let us know you're coming, man. We'll, we'll, we'll accommodate. Steve. Um, Rachel London Smith said, we heard a rumor you might be in the events business. Is that rumor true? What is the events business, Steve? What does that mean? You know, I'm taking are it as, are we going to throw shock therapy events? So are we going to show a concert? We had considered actually doing a full concert, full set, hour and a half of Steely just Dan? Steve. Oh. Literally just Steve doing cover songs because <laughs> he's freaking good at it. Whatever works. <laughs> um, but uh, his wife said, no, I'm not letting him go on the road, which means we are not in the event business because Steve is not willing to jump in. Blame it on me. Right. I got another question that has um, nothing to do with my wait, uh, wait, lack back, of... Back uh, to events. <laughs> back um, of uh, but we like to party. We do love to party. So if, if that's what someone means by events, we throw events nightly. I'd pay to see that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, we're not. Let's throwing do a any survey. Concerts. How much would you pay to see that? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe his wife will let him go on. Maybe the road. who knows? Yeah, fill out the survey. Uh, Justin, when's the Pro XP race rack coming? Uh, are we working gonna, on it? It's, yeah, we are we working, are working on, on it. On it. Uh, we're, we're working on it. I'm not going to give you a date. It's going to be a bit because we are actually spending a lot of time on it. It's going to be freaking sick. But it's in the design process, and we'll see how quick we can do prototypes. Same with the Pro-R, too. And Pro-R. Um, Pro-R, for sure. And uh, we have another one lined up over there, too. Escapes me. Just like CB Grease. Turbo-R. Turbo, turbo, well, we same, have pro XP, Turbo-R. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mitch, you got piles of stuff. Do you guys rebuild shocks for dirt bikes? Bell Ray. What? Bell Ray Grease. Look at him. He's oh. back. Swepco. <laughs> Bell Ray mixed 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so old. <laughs> Squirrel! <laughs> Short term memory. <laughs> Gone. Um, Swepco, Bell Ray mix. Uh, that's what we've run in all our class one cars, class 10s. Going straight into the UTVs, no issues. Sorry, Mitch. You're good. Do you guys rebuild shocks for dirt bikes? No, we do not. Nope, we stay out of it, man. There's a lot of guys that do it, so let, let them do it. Steve. Justin, will a 5-1 offset on a two-seat 21 Turbo S have a noticeable effect on scrub radius with DS 33-inch tires? 5-1's perfect. 5-1 would be great. Um, like noticeable, it will not ruin it. It will be better than anything else you've got on the car if you've got a 4-3 5.2 or anything in that range, then the 5.1 is going to smoke them all yeah. and it'll drive a lot better. Yeah. Now, that's what I would run. We run a 4.1. 5.1 is perfect too. Hey, you guys, remember we're talking about surveys. Fill it out. You're going to be in drawing for the first 50 people, not necessarily the first, but you're going to draw 50 people for t shirts. We're going to give out a free spring kit and that's going to be drawn as well. Two weeks. Next, throw it out there Thursday. We'll do it. Be honest and we will. Listen to you, Steve. 
Justin, they yes, want to sir. know, will the new prototype preload kit interfere with the electronics from the IQS system? Okay, Steve. Absolutely not. No interference whatsoever. IQS does not care what preload is on the car. Smart Shocks does not care what preload is on the car. Uh, Dynamics does not care what preload is on the car. It, 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 there's zero effect to anything that you have electronic on the vehicle. Uh, it's literally as easy as pressing a button and raise it up for the weight that you've added to it and uh, send it. That way you don't have to slow down your driving style because you got a bunch of guys in the back. Right, Steve? Yes, sir. Or extra beer. I always have dudes with me. Lots of dudes. Mitch, you yes. got any questions? I did. Uh, well, not really a question, more of a comment, but Chad Hart, mom, said, had shocks rebuilt in May and finally got out to test for a super quick ride. The ride was amazing. Wow. Why did it take you so long from May <laughs> to now? God, I would have been all over that. Must have been weather or work or something. I feel bad for you, man. Glad that you like it, though. That's our goal. Yes. Steve. Uh, Justin, do you have a front toe recommended for faster desert play running? 21 Turbo S. Yes, quarter inch toe in. Quarter inch toe in. Quarter inch toe in, same in the rear if you can adjust it. Now, Turbo S typically is not adjustable, but if you have the option, then I would do the same in the back too. But quarter toed in. Behind you is the Polaris 200. Mitch can tell us all about some of the cool stuff that's on it since we're actually just killing a little bit of time. Mitch? What was it, uh, big things come in small packages that we were uh, going for on us? Yeah. Mm. Uh, no, super excited about this, guys. It's, uh, My wife tells me that all the time. Cool that's what I heard. It's pretty have something set up for, for kids that are wanting to get into racing or sure. just like a fun play car. So mm. we're going to have full Fox shocks for it available here soon. We have radius rods already ready for it on the website. We have front rear links, and then we have tie rods that will be ready in about a week or two. Um, the shock side of things are going to take a little bit longer. We're still playing with those a little bit. Um, but excited to have it set up a lot better than the factory side of things as far as tunability, adjustability, ride quality, all of that stuff there. Plus, you'll be able to actually ride this in camp if you want to take it out and have fun with it too. So. <laughs> Wait for it. What are we talking about today? Electronic preload. Yep. There so might be something that let's, can work for. Let's paint this scenario for everybody, okay? So your kids are in their 200 ripping around having a good old time and uh, you're like i can freaking take that kitty track a little faster than my kids well then uh you're big er than your kids i hope, <laughs> I hope. and uh you and your buddy hop in the 200 and freaking blop right well you can press the button and raise it back up just so that you guys can rip it and your kids can rip it think about it it works out really good steve so justin that was a question Will the E preload be only for 3.0 and 2.5 shocks, or will it be for 2.0 shocks as well? We will have it for everything at some point in time. Right now, we're concentrating on 2.5 and 3.0, but 2.0 is coming soon. Right now, we have prototypes for 2.5, 3.0. Let me put it that way. Understood. But uh, that'll be cool because I'd like to hop in that and go rip that thing around. I know, I'll right? Like it's already fun, but we want to tune it for the kids and then have it tuned for everybody else too because they're going to use it. Guaranteed. Um, I think I've said it all. I'm going to say it one more time. Go to the site, fill out the form, give us your input. Even if you're not a customer for this, even if you don't even care, you, if you're, you're thinking you might want to do it, we want our information from everybody. How much are you willing to pay for different systems, okay? Electronic, uh, where it rises up or raises up right there in front of you, or self-pumping where it'll raise up over uh, the first 100 yards that you hit some bumps. Um, both accomplish the same thing. One costs a little more. What are you guys willing to do? That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Give us your information. We're not going to spam you. We're just going to give you free stuff. Mitch, anything else? Oh, I got Good with your questions. Steve? I've got nothing that. else. You, then the only thing you got is to take us out. I can take us out. Guys, please visit the website, www.shocktherapyusa.com. Fill out the survey at the top of the site. Give us your information. We're going to send you some cool stuff. We're going to pick one lucky winner for a spring kit in two weeks. But also, you got any questions, call us. 623-217-4959.